The church, in response to the celebration of Halloween, designated this day on our Christian church calendar as All Saints Sunday, when we will gather and we'll remember all of those saints who have gone on before us, who live now eternally in the presence of God, and are with us as they gather in that great cloud of witnesses to still encourage us to run the race of faith that is before us. Our altar flowers this morning are in honor of Nancy West. She'll have a birthday this Tuesday, and they're given by her husband, uh, Bill West. Also, want to bring to your attention that you can see that I am doing quite well. I want to thank you for all your prayers and all the calls and all the texts over these past few weeks. And Faye has recovered, just didn't feel 100% today, but will return and join with us for worship next Sunday on the 8th. Also want to bring you up to speed over some surgeries that will occur this week. Doug Hicks will have his full knee replacement this week. And also this past week, uh, ter uh, Terry Nunn had back surgery and is recovering and is at home. Uh, we have two in the hospital at Greenview, Jack Jeanette and Charlotte Earls. And so we ask that you remember them as well. Also, over the past few weeks in the shuffle, just in case you have not heard, uh, Bonnie Watson's mother, Charmaine Williams, uh, died two or three weeks ago, and there will still be a private graveside service for her. And as, it, as of this moment, I'll be doing that this Wednesday uh, in Owensboro for her family. And also, we ask that you continue to remember Bill Matthews in the loss of Joyce. And you should have read in the obituary in the um, Daily News that there will be a memorial service for Joyce, and her family just hasn't determined when that date will be in the future. But we will notify you uh, of that. Okay. Once again, if you're watching online today, also bear with us because today our new live streaming equipment is here. As we shared from the very beginning, it will take a few weeks to get all the glitches worked out, so just bear with those who are trying to run all of that new equipment, new software, and our goal is to make our service the best quality service that it can be. And so we want to thank all of those who have done all of that work behind the scenes uh, to make all of that possible. Are there any other announcements or concerns to be shared this morning? Bo has one. Um, for all of you that know, this is a, a October was Pastor Appreciation Month, and uh, we missed it by a day, so we're going to say this is October the 32nd today. So, Brother Steve, this is made by, uh, by uh, the Hendrix and Ostello family for you, and I understand that's your favorite verse that we have right there. Everybody ought to know Lamentations 322, Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. So, this is from them, and we have cards and, and whatnot from the church family. So I like whatnot. <laughs> on, honor, uh, on behalf of the session, we apologize for missing you last month. I think we missed the last two Sundays for some reason, but, you know, thank you for everything and, and Faye and all that you do for our church, our church family. Thank you for keeping us in your prayers and thinking about us in all that you do. Thank you. While you're up here, let me turn your mic on. Okie dokie. There's one thing after all my time here, I never feel underappreciated. Certainly over the past few weeks, I was bombarded, Faye and I, by all the texts, offers. If, if I took everybody's offer up on all the times they wanted to bring me food, uh, as someone said, did you lose any weight? Well, if I lost it, I picked it back up somewhere along the way before I got here this morning. And uh, 
once again, Faye and I do love you as our church family, and we know that relationship is reciprocal, and we appreciate all that you continue to do for us as we continue to serve together. Any other announcements? Okay. If not, let our worship begin. Join with me as we pray. Loving God, we gather in our hearts this day for no other purpose than to praise and to worship you. We come, O oh God, thanking you for your goodness, which has been shown to us in our lives in so many deep, surprising, and powerful ways. We thank you, God, that you have given us your goodness so that we can share that goodness with others. We pray, O oh God, that your goodness will seep out the pores of our lives this week and that it will impact the lives of all of those around us. We thank you, God, that you have restored us through your work in Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have forgiven us our sins. We thank you for making us whole through the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for the restoration of all things. And on this Sunday, we pray for the restoration of our world, of our nation. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the way this country was founded and for the freedoms we enjoy as a nation. Help us, Lord, as a country to deal with the realities of this pandemic, especially to find a cure for COVID-19. We thank you, God, for those who have encouraged and continue to encourage us during these uncertain times. And ask that you show us, O oh God, the ways that we can encourage others who are struggling, who are dealing with depression and other issues. Bless us, O oh God, this day in worship 
and may our life be a blessing to others. Receive our thanks and strengthen us this day to be your people. For it is in Christ's name we humbly pray. Amen. Several years ago, when Di and I married, we made the song that we'd like to sing for you today. I think it's probably the reason she chose it. It's many others' favorite hymn, Here I Am, Lord. And what it talks about in this song is responding to the call of God upon your life and sending God and going wherever God sends you into the world. So let us begin this morning by...
before this special music this morning, each year the church gives out two Christian service awards. And I'd like to give one of those out this morning. The first servant that we'd like to recognize this morning is one who is more often seen than heard. Not because this servant is unable to express themselves or their thoughts or their opinions when necessary. But week after week behind the scenes, this servant faithfully goes about helping us get ready for our weekly worship services as well as keeping our website current. This servant has faithfully served on our property and maintenance ministry team with other team members, working always to keep our facilities and grounds the best they can be. And we have certainly benefited from his outstanding craftsman skills. This servant has gone well above and beyond what anyone would ever expect for him and does so with a willing heart. I personally, along with Faye, know how much this servant has helped us in providing the most creative and inspiring programs throughout the years, especially around the holidays. This servant has served as an elder and in other leadership roles throughout the years in our congregation. It goes without saying that this servant truly understands the words when Jesus spoke them when he said, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing when serving and giving to others. It is my privilege and my honor to present the 2020 Christian Service Award to Mr. Jeff Hines. Well deserved, do you not think? <laughs> also, this morning, as I have shared with you through the phone tree message, today is All Saints Sunday. And today, not only do we remember the ones in our congregation who have died the last year, but we remember anyone that you'd like to share their name in a few moments. But this morning we want to remember Jerry Hudson, Martha Jeanette, Chris Meredith, Joyce Matthews, Charmaine Williams, Peggy Thompson, Charles Dietrich, Thomas Mahorter, Lucille Wilkie, Joseph Zuccarell, and Cordell and Patricia Smith. And if there are other names of your loved ones who have died that you'd like for us to remember, because remember, as it says in the book of Hebrews 12, those who have gone on before us surround us in a great cloud of witnesses this morning and watch us as we continue to run the race that is set before us. Are there others that you'd like to remember? Marilyn Triplett. Mildred Clark. Mildred Clark. Howard, Howard Jeanette. Brooklyn Durham, Carlton Hatcher, Sally Nunn, Ozell McDonald, a great one. Mary Catherine King, I'm sorry, thank you very much there, Carol. Yes, I had her name down and just forgot to read it. Mary Catherine King, who served this church faithfully as an organist. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bow in your presence this day, and we give you thanks, for we realize, dear God, that we are not born saints, but we become saints because we make ourselves available to what God asks us to do, not only for him, but for others. We give you thanks, O oh God, this day for all the names that have been lifted out loud to you. 
realizing, oh God, that many of us said those names silently and lifted them up before your throne of grace this day. We thank you, dear God, for their faithful service. And we are grateful, dear God, that they continue to serve as a source of inspiration and encouragement to us. And we pray, dear God, that one day we too will, like them, will enter into your eternal presence and we will hear the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say to us, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. We pray now, dear God, your blessings upon all who are present this day and as you continue to guide and direct our thoughts in this service. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes. No. Yep, we sure do. This baby grand piano over here are, was given to us from the Longs. Anybody else? Yes. Jerry Fondren. Jerry Fondren. Yes, another good one. I ought to have a sucker in my mouth right about now. Many great ones of this church. Yes. Jane Long, Porter Long, I can name them. I can just go down the list. Ooh, the Postons. I can never forget Eva. Okay. Craig would like to sing a song this morning to you about the goodness of our God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All of my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so, so good In every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after, it's running after me Your goodness is running after, it's running after me with my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's 
running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. My life laid down. I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God. <laughs> It's good to be back, uh, like Steve did. I just want to thank everybody who um, brought us food, offered to run errands for us. Um, coronavirus was pretty easy for me, but I'm young, as they say. So, um, <clears throat> this children's moments is going to be a little bit different. Usually, when I do a children's moment. Either I ha already have a Bible story in mind, or I'm going through looking at other sermons and I see an object and I know, I go, I know a story that'll go well with that. Um, but this one is coming from a place of witnessing um, the homeschooling that has to take place during quarantine. Let me just say that I am praying for all of you that are doing that. Um, one thing the Lord has, has shown me um, is that I am grateful that I don't have to do that. Uh, but uh, there's a verse in Proverbs that says, um, though you may stumble, the Lord will always be there to pick you up. He won't let you fall. Uh, and I thought about my greatest achievements. Um, and so what, like I've mentioned in previous sermons, I ran track at one point. My greatest finish was third. And that wasn't even like third in the state. It was third in one race, in one event. And that, was, that was the highlight of my career. Um, but it doesn't mean that I failed, right? And when I think about homeschooling, I think about all those times that I sat and I was really young and I was with my parents and I was just tired and my dad would go, okay, Jordan, Timothy has four apples. He takes away two. How many does he have? And then I just cried because I was done. Um, <clears throat> and I think when, as I'm looking at it, right, we overlook small progress. In a world right now where we're going through all these major changes, we don't notice the small things, right? Like three months ago, we couldn't have even been here together, but it upsets some people that we have to be here with a mask. Um, and another one of my greatest moments is up here. I was 13 when I got this. This is a fourth place finish, and it is one of the best moments of my life. This is a long distance competition 
in which you throw the frisbee as far as you can and the dog catches it. Um, and the top four get a wooden frisbee because it's set up in a tournament style and you have to beat, up, beat out a bunch of other teams. Um, and I was 13 and my dog didn't feel like playing that day, but for one throw, I threw it 58 yards and by the grace of God, she ran it down and caught it and I was the happiest dude ever. I knew for sure I wasn't making it past fourth place. Like, that was it. But for that moment, I was on top of the world. Um, and then this one, some of you may have seen, um, if you have a church directory, you will see him, my dog Rambler, that currently lives with us. Now, this is the world championships. Um, and it's separated into different weights of the Frisbee, this being the lightest weight was an 80 gram frisbee, which would be smaller than this. Um, and we got third in the world. And that is the highest he's ever finished, is third. But you know what? He's still the best dog. Don't argue with me. Um, and when I think back to my school career, uh, I may, I know I've shared this before. Most kids have like A's on their report cards and their little memory books. I have referrals. I have the times that I got in trouble, and I've shared this before. My best one, the peak of my, my masterpiece, if you will, was when I was in elementary school, it was written that I stood up on the desk and made spooky noises, and that's why I was sent out of class. And I meant to bring my uh, college degree to show that like I made it, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know where it is. Um, But my proudest moments in college were not A's because I never really had to work hard to get those. My proudest moments were the B's and the C's. I remember literally falling on the ground in, in praise because I got a C in accounting. A C, which meant I passed. For anyone else, that might not cut it. What I'm trying to get at is David wasn't the best king. The disciples weren't the best followers of Jesus. So on and so forth. God doesn't call you to be the best. Parents, I think it's important that we remember that when we're homeschooling our children at this point. He doesn't call you to be the best. He calls you to try your best. Give your best effort. Because if he called us to be the best, I wouldn't be here. I'm not the best. I try really hard. Sometimes Steve thinks I should try harder. But um, to the kids, I know online learning is awful because I've seen you do it, but just try your best. I know you get tired. I know that looking at a screen is boring, but try your best. And to your parents, know that your kid is trying their best. And be thankful for the little steps, because the tiniest step forward is still a step forward. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day. I thank you um, for your healing on me and Steve and Faye. And I thank you for not letting my wife get the, the Rona, as they, say, they call it. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to gather here, and I pray that my message is something that can be taken home and used. In your name we pray. Amen. In the month of November... We will be in the book of Ephesians, and our first text is out of the first chapter this morning. Over the past weeks prior to my getting sick, we looked at the uncertain times in the life of David, and though times in David's life was uncertain, we also discovered in the life of David that God is reliable and that God remains good during all of those times. And what I hope we'll accomplish looking at the book of Ephesians is, is that there is so much unrest 
in our country, in our world, in these uncertain times. And in order for us to address how we might find peace and unity and harmony, we're going to walk through the book of Ephesians during the month of November. And looking ahead, before you come next week, it'll be based on Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. But today, it is out of the first chapter, beginning with verse 3, reading through verse 14. And these 11 verses actually are one continuous sentence when Paul writes these words. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he has chosen us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also included in Christ when you heard the words of the truth of the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guarantee in our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now, O oh God, we ask that all the meditations of our hearts and the words of thy servant, acceptance in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, for it's in his holy name that we humbly pray. Amen. If you're familiar at all with the Gospels, you will know in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus prays a prayer that we all might have unity, that we all might be one. Well, what I want to suggest to you this morning is, is that this little ancient letter, this book called Ephesians, is written, I think, by the Apostle Paul because, according to Paul, we are able to find peace, we are able to find harmony, and we are to able to find unity. And the foundation of that peace and harmony and unity is based none other than upon the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hopefully, as we go throughout this month, you're going to see that in the first part of this book, it tells us how we find peace. And in the latter part of this letter, we discover how we find this foundational truth and how we apply it so that we might truly be one in Christ Jesus. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I hear it all the time on social media. I hear it all the time on television. Everyone always raising the question. Why is it that we live in a world now, why can't we just all simply get along with each other? Which reminds me of the words that Mother Teresa spoke when she said, she said, if we have no peace and harmony and unity in this world, it's because we have forgotten that we belong 
to Almighty God. Because the reality and the truth is, beloved, is that we belong to one another. And we live under the reign and authority of Almighty God. Over these past few weeks, I've had a lot of time to read. And I have read the book of Ephesians over and over again. So, or might reverberate in the depths of my own soul. If you go home today, you can read this entire book in less than 20 minutes. But what you'll notice is, is that in this original opening remarks and pleasantries that Paul Jesus Christ. Our scripture this morning sentence. I'm here to tell you the Apostle Paul's eighth grade grammar teacher would have given him Jordan not a C but an F. Because the sentence stop. And he writes this one continuous sentence. He puts outbursts, this outpouring, this blessing, if you will, that God says that we all have. If you look at the text very closely, you will notice that it says, Bless Repeating the word blessed. And what the benediction is at the end of the worship hour. And so what is And he does that as blessing truly is into the present where you and I live each and every day. Several years ago, I used to make trips to St. Louis all the time. About halfway there, there's a little town in Illinois where I would always stop of all places, Cracker Barrel. But after eating my meal at the Cracker Barrel, there was a little ice cream parlor there. I would pull out a Cracker Barrel and I would think, I have some of that wonderful ice cream. And I can't even think of the name of the little ice cream parlor now. But after I'd finished my meal, I would go over there. And when you walk in it, they had all these unusual flavors at that time. And, and my, my, my favorite was a swirl ice cream with toffee chips. They had chocolate with macadamia nuts. And they had chocolate with Oreo crumbs. Every ice cream that you would put into your mouth was like a burst. that because at this particular ice cream parlor they had a t-shirt I never bought the t-shirt but this is what the t-shirt said life is uncertain so eat dessert first in other words their theology there in that little ice cream parlor was is you begin with the end the you don't have to wait. And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying to us in this long run on sentence called a benediction. Paul moves all the way of something that would normally have been at the end of the letter. Paul moves it all the way up to the beginning. And if you stop and think about it, that's what Jesus did 
when he preached his famous sermon on the mount. Look at Matthew 5. How does Jesus begin 5, 6, and 7? He says, blessed are you, blessed art thou, blessed are you. Jesus, too, began with the blessing. And so this morning, what I want us to do is, I want us to look at that blessing. Because what that blessing does is, it helps us to identify how we discover peace through Christ Jesus. It does that in three ways. And this is how it does it. It says we have been chosen by the Father. We have been redeemed by the Son. And we have been marked by the Spirit. First, let's talk about how we're chosen. And if you go back and your Bible's still open, you will find in verses 4 through 6, it says, For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world. He chose us to be holy and blameless, so that in love we might be claimed and adopted. Adopted is that primary image that Paul uses in this blessing to describe the fact that the Father has chosen us. We all know what it means to be rejected. The question is, do we all know what it means to be chosen, to, predict, to be predestined, to be elected? Several weeks ago, as I continued to read in the book of Ephesians, I ran across an interesting story about a, about a guy by the name of Ernie Johnson, who was a sportscaster. And he tells an interesting story in his book called Unscripted. It tells about the incredible riches of his own Christian faith and life's journey. But he shares a story, a snapshot out of his family's life. He and his wife had several children by natural birth. But they had decided that they were going to Romania to adopt a little girl. Ernie stayed home in the States taking care of the other children. And the mother is in Romania already visiting with this little girl. But the phone rings early one morning, and it's his wife. And she calls him, and she says, I don't know what I'm going to do. She says, I've met this little boy also. He's about three years old. He has severe and significant health challenges. Through her tears, she said to her husband, I just can't keep imagining what is the rest of this little boy's life going to be like? What if no one claims him? What if no one takes him home? Ernie then said to his wife very quickly, then bring him home to us. And through many obstacles and through all the bureaucracy process, she brought not only a little girl home, but she brought that little three-year-old boy home. Google Ernie Johnson and see a recent portrait of his wife and his family because this little boy continued to have health issues and remains in a wheelchair to this very day. But yet, he's been adopted he was chosen, and he's now a part of the Johnson family. And this is what Ernie Johnson wrote in his book. He says, we don't want any fanfare. We don't want any recognition for adopting this little boy. For we believe that the heart of God is in adoption. And that we have only done for him what God has done for us. For we believe 
that God is in the heart of adoption. And we have only done for him what God has done for us. So the first thing that we need to remember in order to understand this blessing that Paul wrote, he says we need to realize that we've been chosen by the Father. We've been claimed in Jesus Christ. And you and I have a destiny beyond this world. And if you've never experienced that phrase, imagine right now in this moment, God is looking into your face and this is what God is saying to you. Bring him home. Bring her home. Because you see, that's exactly what the gospel is about. We have been chosen by the Father. But the second part of that blessing is, is that not only have we been chosen by the Father, we have been redeemed by the Son. Did you catch it in verses 7 through 9? In him it says, through the redemption of his blood, we have the forgiveness of sin, the Apostle Paul says. And that through that, God is making all things right. And how has God made all things right for us? Because through Christ, he paid that price for us. And you see this big word, redemption, in the New Testament? That word means to pay a bounty so that someone can be forgiven and be made whole. When I was learning how to drive, my grandfather bought a 1967 Chevrolet pickup truck. It was saddled brown. It wasn't like his other truck, a 55 Chevy that he traded. This one had an automatic transmission. And when you touch the pedal, in that new truck, whoom, it would take off. You have to remember my grandfather lived to be 96. And so at 14, I was a greater risk at driving than he was. But this new pickup truck that he had gotten, this 67 Chevrolet saddle brown chrome bumper front and back, was so much bigger than that 55 Chevrolet step side. And he let me drive. I got in behind that 67 Chevrolet, got myself positioned just right, and I put it in drive and it went forward, and then I put it in reverse, and what I discovered, reverse and drive are much closer than I thought, and I backed into it and wham, right back into a tree. And I thought, boy, I am in trouble now. My grandfather got out of the truck, walked around to the back, looked at it, never yelled, never screamed. But in his compassionate, kind voice, he said, Steve, I hope you've learned now, boy that a vehicle is something that you have to be responsible for. I'm just glad you're okay. That was it. He never said another word to me. He only had that truck two weeks. But he said more to me through the actions that he took next. My grandfather was not a very wealthy man but he took money that he had put back. And you know what he did? He replaced that back bumper on that 67 Chevrolet pickup truck. Because I told you I was only 14 at the time and I certainly didn't have money to put a new bumper on that truck. It was bent to the point I certainly couldn't have straightened it out on my own. There was nothing as a kid I could do. 
It was a price I could not pay. And yet my grandfather gladly paid for it anyway. Tim Keller talks about how the nature of sin is such that Jesus had to die for us to pay the sacrifice for us. But Tim Keller also writes, but it's also the nature of God's love that he was glad to die for us. How many of you noticed in the text how it repeated this phrase over and over and over again? In this blessing it said, according to his pleasure, according to his good pleasure, over and over again, we see the joy of God even in the midst of our redemption, even in the midst of the sacrifice that he paid for our life. I don't know about you, but isn't it remarkable to know that God was willing to pay such a price for us? Later, I continued because I didn't have money to buy my own car. I continued to drive my grandfather's 67 Chevrolet pickup truck everywhere I went. And every time I parked it and got out and walked around that truck and looked at that new shiny bumper on the back, I knew the price my grandfather paid so I didn't have to drive a banged, beat-up truck. But it was whole. Paul says, you do know you've been chosen by the Father. You've been redeemed by the Son. And Paul says, finally, in verses 13 and 14, he says, you do understand, as a believer, you've been marked by the Spirit. You've been marked with a seal. Do you believe that, he says? And what is a seal? A seal back in those days is the same thing a seal is for us today. A seal was to keep the contents inside. A seal was a, a mark of a authenticity. A seal was to tell you who this really was from. Paul says that we've been marked by a seal. He says when we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he says something happens within us. And we're marked with the indwelling presence of God's Holy Spirit. And because we've been marked, he says, and because we have been sealed, we bear another person's name. I thought about Tory's story this week. If you're on Facebook, get on some of my children's and you'll see they were the Toy Story characters on a block party in their neighborhood. But Toy Story is one of those Pixar classic set of movies about a little boy named Andy who, was, who had a beloved toy by the name of Woody. And one of the great icons of understanding what it means to belong, to be loved, is the fact that at the bottom of Woody's boot, Andy had written his name. That Woody doesn't belong to himself but that he belongs to another, that he is claimed and called by another. Now, there's so much of the identity of the story of these great movies, and there's four. By the time you get to the fourth movie of Toy Story, there's another toy, Forky. And if you'll remember, Forky belongs to Bonnie. And Woody now belongs to Bonnie because Andy is all grown up. And Bonnie loves this little trash that is turned into a treasure. And on the bottom of Forky's feet, 
This creation that Bonnie made on the first day of school when she was scared. Bonnie has written her name. And what happens in this movie, in this culmination of all this master for storytelling, is that Woody discovers life purposes for him going forward. His purpose is to be going to take lost toys and making sure that they find a home. That they have a friend. And so little Woody spends the rest of his days helping to unite toys with people who need an expression of love in their life. And if you've ever watched the movies, and I recommend them, Woody is even willing to do this at the cost of his own wholeness, his own voice. Because you remember, his voice box is a classic toy, which is one of the indications that he's special. But he lays that down in order that others might have a chance to be loved. Paul says, you and I bear another's name. And you see, the most remarkable thing that you discover about this blessing is, is that over and over and over again in the English language, it's translated different ways. But in these 11 verses, 15 times, 15 times it says, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Your life has been marked with a seal. It says, in Christ, you've been marked with a seal. That's who you and I truly are. I mentioned at the very beginning this morning that we're going to try to discover in the first part of Ephesians how do we find that unity and harmony and peace that our world so desperately needs. Hopefully what you've discovered already with me in the study of Ephesians is it's not found in anything we do. But it's found in something that was done for us. Recognize once again from the text in this blessing. Chosen, redeemed, marked. They're all in the past tense. They were things that we did not do for ourselves. They are things that God did for us in Jesus Christ. Chosen, redeemed, marked. And believe it or not, for our journey through Ephesians, this foundational truth will become the cornerstone of whether or not we truly figure out the fact of what Mother Teresa said. If we have no peace in this world, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to one another in Christ Jesus. Maybe for you today, the peace you need is not just something that's out there in the world or something that you see on the news. But the peace you need is the peace that is found within your own heart and life, in your own soul. If it is, and you have not found that peace that Paul says that passeth all understanding. I want Jeff to put on the screen. And since there can be no pens or pencils in the pew, I want to ask you right now, do you know, do you know that you have been chosen by the Father you have been redeemed by the Son. 
and you've been marked by the Spirit. Because, beloved, when you do believe that, and you truly understand you've been marked, you'll realize that you bear another person's name and that you are not your own and that you belong to God. And he looks at you and he says, bring him, bring her home. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, I thank you for this beautiful run-on sentence <clears throat> and the fact that you don't hold us in suspense, but at the very beginning of this letter, you tell us what you have done for us in the riches of your glorious grace. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness and even when we have the lowest of disapproval ratings in the way we treat one another and are living in this world, I pray, God, that you will give us a sense of your peace. For anyone here, God, who doesn't, who does not just know the words, but deep within the mara of their soul, may they know that they are chosen redeemed and marked. I pray that you, O oh God, will impress that upon us. And Lord, for that person who needs to take that step forward, that movement toward trusting you in faithfulness, I ask God that they'll surrender their heart to you and open themselves up to the possibility of being made whole. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand with me as we sing our hymn of consecration this morning. Open my eyes that I might see. Also this morning, if you are here and did not get your church directory, the church directories are here. And also, if you would like, this past week, there has been stuff placed in the fellowship hall. Uh, it is stuff left from Martha Jeanette. If you'd like to look at any of that and you'd like to take it, you may do so. It's in the heritage hall over to my right. And also, we will, we will resume Bible study this week and our program. We're in Psalm 43 in response to Psalm 42. And also, next Saturday, there will be the church-wide yard sale here. I don't know the times on it now, but 7 to 12. If you can help, see Diana Clark, okay? I invite you now to join with me in our responsive benediction. Find your direction in life as you follow Christ. Find in your neighbor a brother or sister in Christ. Our freedom allows for full commitment. Because we are free, we can choose to be loyal.
Surely God will bless our journey. Go in peace, confident of God's abiding grace.